lot of your questions. We give you advice. It's time to open up the mailbag. You send an email and we read it on the air. It's something we call Bobby's Mailbag. Yeah. Hello, Bobby Bones. I need advice. I just found out that my dad is not my biological dad. We did a 23andMe kit, and it showed that we have no DNA between us. I talked to both my parents. They are divorced, and they gave me the name of my biological father. Dang. Ooh. What do I do? I just found this out two days ago. I want to contact him, but what would I say? Should I write him a letter? I have his address. Or should I message him through Facebook? How do I go about this? I need your advice. Thanks. I love the show. From Hope. That is heavy. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you found this out two days ago. I don't think you do anything today. This is going to be a big step. I think you're going to need to reach out. I think this is a big step. I think you give it a week to just collect your thoughts and make sure you're not reacting and make sure you are responding to the situation. Two days in, you're still like hearing, you know how whenever you get really sure. crazy bad news or you're just like hearing a ringing in your ears and it's nothing else is, you're still in that stage right now. That's tough. This is what I would suggest you do. You wait, you wait two weeks. I know you're going to be itching to reach out. It's going to be the same situation in, uh, you know, 12 days than it is now. You wait two weeks. You gather your thoughts. You, you make notes. You kind of journal a little bit each night about what you'd like to say. Because I think from that, what will happen is you will start to carve what your message is. And then I think you call him if you have his number. And if you don't have his number, I think you message him and say, hey, can I call you? I just found out blank. It's going to be a shock to him too. Unless your parents have reached out to him going, hey, she's about to call you. He's probably going to hear the ringing too. Woo! So I think a message up front to go, hey, listen, I just found out. I would like to talk with you. Is it cool? Can I have your number? Which then gives him a bit of time to collect his thoughts. I would say write a letter, but we sent out some save the dates, and they never got to people yet. <laughs> so, so I mean, the, weather, the, the mail kind of sucks. <laughs> um, I, I, I do think you, you give yourself a beat. You message him, say, I'd like to call and talk to you. This is what I found out, which gives him a beat. He doesn't need two weeks. And then you guys can have a, a conversation on the phone for the first time. And then from there, you get to, again, choose your pathway. Maybe he wants everything to do with you now as a dad. Maybe he's like, hey, that's right, but this isn't somewhere I want to go. I don't know. That's up to you guys there. Well, that's out of the mailbag's hands at that point. Yeah. But I think you respect yourself and give you some time. I think you respect him and give him a little bit of time. And then mostly you still respect your parents. That dad that raised you, still your dad. He sacrificed a lot to raise her. He was her dad. Mm -hmm. Still your dad. As someone who has a biological father who he doesn't know, I don't feel like that guy's my dad. But I have the right to feel that way. You have the right to feel if this new, maybe you create a new relationship with him. I did get asked recently, a couple days ago, by my cousin, going, hey, are you inviting your biological father to the wedding? Your cousin asked you this? Uh-huh. My cousin, because mm -hmm. I have double cousins. They're cousins on both sides. And I asked Caitlin, I was like, dang, he asked me. I didn't think, just thought he was asking to, to be curious about it. And I was like, no, I'm not. I mean, I've talked to him in person once in 25 years. So I'm not inviting him to the wedding because I just don't want it to be weird. I don't want any part of the wedding sure. for me to be some sort of science experiment or for me to be anxious about what's going to happen. If you're going to do that at some point, it's not uh, the wedding's probably not the place to do that. Yeah. Right? I mean, we met, and it was a, it was good for me to do that, but I don't think the wedding is like our big second appearance. Yeah. Um, I, I just hope I... I this is great news for you to find out who it is. It stinks to find out that it happened, but it did happen. Good for you. Maybe you can have some questions answered about your life that you've always been curious about. And go forth. Give yourself a minute. Give him a minute. And then go and establish the life that you want to have. What are you going to say? Well, a personal story that maybe could shed a little perspective on the other side of it. My uncle, a few years back, found out that he had a daughter, and she was already like 40-something. 
and she did the same thing. She just showed up and said, hey, I'm your daughter. And man, the the craziness that it created in that family was pretty like nuts. I mean, the wife couldn't couldn't handle that. The current wife couldn't handle that. And they went through a lot of problems after that because of his past, which they probably didn't handle it the right way. But I mean, that's things you don't think about of just surprising being like, hey, I know you don't know I'm here, but I'm your son or daughter. And then the family, current family just kind of go it's a good point about the wife who knows the situation i do you give everybody a little space before you you barge it listen to happened to arkansas keith i remember one day he got a phone call I'm like what next thing you know i think she was 12 or 13 mm. she moved in as a daughter we were like what <laughs> yeah. yeah i don't know what his mind was because i don't know if he knew there was a chance i don't know but i just remember one day i'm getting a phone call and next thing you know we have somebody, a new one new person living in the house. We, we lived in a 900 square foot house. Wow. Me, my sister. This is when I was 13 or 14, so I was already a teen. This is why I moved into the camper. I lived in the camper for a year. Me, my sister, Arkansas Keith, my mom, his daughter, and then another daughter. Six people lived in a 900 square feet house. And this happened while you were there. Oh yeah, I was 13, 13 14 years old. Yep, it's a thing. Try to be as mature as you can about it. It's a shock. Good luck. That's my advice. That's the mailbag. We got your email and we read it on the air. Now it's time to close Bobby's mailbag. Yeah. It's a Bobby Bones show.